Okay, so let's talk a little bit about the acoustic reflex. What and why? Uh, the acoustic reflex is caused by the contraction of the stapedius muscle. Um, and remember that the stapedius muscle is a very small muscle in the middle ear space. So if you look at this picture on the right here, you can see You can see the malleus, and then the incus, and then the stapes. And right at the neck of the stapes, there is a muscle and a tendon that belong to the stapedius. Uh, the stapedius is innervated by the facial nerve. Uh, so the facial nerve controls um, the stapedius muscle. And then when the stapedius contracts, it pulls the stapes backwards, and by doing that, it reduces the movement of the stapes in and out of the oval window of the cochlea. The acoustic reflex happens in response to sudden intense sounds. Um, the theories about what uh, functional purpose the acoustic reflex serves evolutionarily has actually undergone several transformations. Um, it's essentially thought that it serves a protective function. It used to be thought that it keeps intense sound out of the cochlea, that um, when it is triggered it keeps potentially damagingly loud sounds from causing damage in the cochlea. And that some degree of that may still be true. The problem is the latency of the acoustic reflex, the time from when the sound happens to when the reflex kicks in, is actually too long um, to be effective against some of the most damaging types of sounds like gunshots and impulse type sounds. Um, there are additional theories now that it may protect against longer term noise, so like factory noise. Um, noise that is ongoing for a longer period of time. It's also thought that it may confer some advantage for understanding speech and noise, that people who have faster, more robust acoustic reflexes actually do better at understanding speech and noise um, when the reflex is activated. The structures involved in the acoustic reflex. Um, so the stapedius muscle, if we look at the right, uh, sorry, the right side of the picture, the left ear. So the SM is the stapedius muscle in the middle ear. Um, so sound is traveling through the middle ear to the cochlea, from the cochlea up the auditory nerve, from the auditory nerve to the ventral cochlear nucleus, um, from the ventral cochlear nucleus up to the superior olivary complex and the facial nerve nucleus on the same side and then from the facial nerve nucleus down back to the facial nerve which innervates the stapedius muscle and activates it. So if you're just looking ipsilaterally, if you're just looking at the left ear, ignoring the dotted lines, um, the, that's the reflex arc for the left ipsilateral reflex. Now, when a loud enough, startling enough noise comes into the left ear, it is going to simultaneously activate a reflex in the left ear and the right ear. So what's actually happening is simultaneous bilateral activation. Um, and this happens through um, contralateral connections from the ventral cochlear nucleus on the left side to the right SOC, the connections from the left SOC to the right SOC, and then a connection from the left SOC to the right facial nerve nucleus. Um, and this is just showing the connections from one side. These all also would be true on the other side as well. So all the right ear structures cross back over um, to the left ear structures as well. So even if you only put sound in one ear, you're going to activate a bilateral reflex. So you could put sound into the left ear only and measure a reflex in the right ear. Why are we measuring the acoustic reflex at all? We know what it is and why it happens. 
Um, what can it tell us about hearing loss and ear health? First, it's objective. There is no conscious control over the reflex. It's like hitting your knee. It's an entirely physiological response. So it's really helpful as a cross check to help us verify and work in concert and support other test results. It has the reflex arc that I just showed you that we're going to look at again um, in a different slideshow needs a multitude of structures and nerves to be intact and functioning correctly in order for the reflex to be activated. And so any absent or abnormal response means any one of these structures or nerves may not be working quite correctly. But because of this, because there are multiple structures and multiple nerves involved, it's not typically a standalone test. The acoustic reflex results support um, or act as cross checks for other test results. And we'll talk about what other test results um, in one of the other slideshows.